the original broadcast on July 3rd, 1946, and slightly edited for tonight's performance, the House of Squib presents Academy Award. And slightly edited for tonight's performance, the House of Squib. Every week, Squib brings you Hollywood's finest, the great picture plays of the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And now, E.R. Squibb and Sons, manufacturing chemists of the medical profession since 1858, bring you the distinguished star, Mr. Humphrey Beauregard, who as best actor of the year was nominated for the 1943 Academy Award. You will also hear Miss Mary Astor, who won the 1941 Academy Award as Best Supporting Actress of the Year, and Sydney Greenstreet, who was nominated for the 1941 Academy Award as Best Supporting Actor. Tonight, Mr. Bogart, Miss Astor, and Mr. Greenstreet will play the famous roles they created for the screen in The Maltese Falcon. The thrilling mystery, which was nominated as Best Picture, of the year for the 1941 Academy Award. And now we present the Maltese Falcon. My name is Spade, Sam Spade, license number 357896, issued by the police department of San Francisco. Occupation, private detective sometimes known as Private Eye. My files in the case of the Maltese Falcon are closed, but I've got the Falcon. I've got it and some dough. My partner got murdered and a very slick chick went up for life. I'll tell you about it. This slick dame comes to me one day gives me a song and dance about her sister and a guy called Floyd Thursby. She wants us to get her sister back before her mother and father get in from Hawaii. I put my partner, Miles Archer, on the case. That night, he gets murdered. And so does this guy, Thursby. I go around to the apartment where the dame is living, the one called Bridget O'Shaughnessy. She had something I seemed to go for. Oh, uh, Mr. Spade, come in. I have come in. Oh, yes, so you have. Mr. Spade, tell me, am I to blame for last night? Well, you warned us that Thursby was dangerous. Of course, you lied to us about your sister and all that, but that doesn't count. We didn't believe you. Oh, help me, Mr. Spade. I, I, I need help so badly. I have no right to ask you, but I do ask you. Help me. <laughs> you won't need much of anybody's help. You're good. You're awful good. It's chiefly in your eyes, I think. And that throb you get into your voice when you say things like, help me, Mr. Spade. Oh, right, I deserve that. But oh, the lie was in the way that I said it, not in what I said. Well, if I'm going to help you, I've got to have some sort of a line on your, on your Floyd Thursby. Well, I met him in the Orient. We came here from Hong Kong last week. Did he kill Archer? Most certainly. I picked a nice sort of playmate. Only that sort could have helped me if if he'd been loyal. How bad of a hole are you in? As bad as could be. Physical danger? I'm not heroic. I don't think there's anything worse than death. Then it's that. It's that as surely as we're sitting here. Unless you help me. Well, who killed Thursby? Your enemies or his? 
his, I don't know. I'm afraid, I, I don't know. Okay, well, who are these enemies? Uh, well, there's a small dark man with white teeth and a British man with a thug of a bodyguard. Oh, this is hopeless. Well, how much money have you got? I've got about $500 left. And give it to me. Hey, there's only 400 here. Oh, I had to keep something to live on. Okay. Well, I'll be back as soon as I can. You needn't, you needn't come to the door with me. I'll let myself out. I went by the office then and found a dark little guy with very white teeth waiting for me. His name was Joel Cairo. He was a Greek. Mr. Spade. I'm trying to recover an ornament that has been, shall we say, mislaid. I thought and hoped you could assist me. The ornament is a statuette, the black figure of a bird. I'm prepared to pay the sum of $5,000 for its recovery. And no questions asked. Uh-huh. Five thousand's a lot of money, and it's a very interesting bird. This uh, figure you're talking about. Hmm. You will put your hands together, back of your neck, Mister Spade. Huh? <laughs> oh. I shall shoot you if you try to stop me, Mister Spade. But I must search your office. Well, you won't find anything but a pair of worn-out rubbers, a half pint of rum, and a pack of chewing gum. We shall see. Please stand up. Sir. Sure. This way? No, the other way. Sure. Oh. I'll take that gun, Mr. Cairo. Now get up. I'm very slow at things like that, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I'm still prepared to pay you the sum of $5,000 for the return of the figure. Do you have it, Mr. Spade? No. Well, if it is not here, then why did you just risk serious injury to prevent my searching for it? Well, you think I should sit around and let people come in and stick me up? You wish some assurance of my sincerity, a retainer? I might. Say, one hundred dollars. Ah, uh, you better make it two. Thanks. Now your first guess was that I had the bird. What's your second guess? That you know where it is or where I can get it. Oh, you're not hiring me to murder or do burglary, but to get back the figure in some lawful way, say from a dame with red hair or a Brit with a gorilla. Oh, so you know. You must beware of them. They would stop at nothing. May I have my pistol back now, Mr. Spade? Huh. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I'd forgotten it. Thank you. Now, Mr. Spade, will you kindly clasp your hands behind your neck? What the? <laughs> Don't move, Mr. Spade. This time I might shoot. I insist on searching your office. Sure, go ahead. I finally got rid of the Greek and started back for Bridget O'Shaughnessy's apartment. Matter of fact, I had a hunch that the Greek was going there himself and started to tail his cab when a sad-faced guy poked something into my back and said, Come on, 
Lady Gutman wants to see you. Here he is, my lady. The guy who was talking to the O'Shaughnessy dame under the Greek. Ah, Mr. Spade. Ah, Lady Gutman. Now, are you a real lady or just a big phony? Well, aren't you a man of many charms? I admire so many qualities in men, but bluntness is not one of them. I distrust a man who talks too much. <laughs> well, I like to talk. Of course. Talking something you can't do judiciously, unless you keep in practice. Yeah. Now, sir, we'll talk if you like, and I'll tell you right out that I'm a woman who likes to talk to a man who likes to talk about subjects I want to talk about. Swell. We'll talk about the black bird then. Mm, you're the man for me, sir. No beating around the bush, right to the point. Let us talk about the black bird by all means. Mr. Spade, have you any conception of how much money can be got for that black bird? No. Well, <laughs> sir, if I told you, if I told you half, you'd call me a liar. <laughs> No, no, not even if I thought so. But you just tell me what it is and I'll figure out the profits. You mean you don't know what that bird is? Well, I know it's, I know what it's supposed to look like and I know the value in human life you people put on it. Miss O'Shaughnessy didn't tell you what it is? And Cairo didn't either? Oh, he offered me 10,000 for it. <laughs> 10,000? And dollars, mind you, not even pounds. They must know what it is. Or do they? What is your impression? I can't tell, they're both lying. If they don't know, I'm the only one in the whole wide sweet world who does. <laughs> Swell, oh, when you've told me, that'll make two of us. Mathematically correct, sir. But I don't know for certain that I'm going to tell you. Oh, don't be foolish. You know what it is and I know where it is. That's why I'm here. Well, sir, where is it? Uh, uh, don't be silly. You see, I must tell you what I know, but you will not tell me what you know. That is hardly equitable, sir. No, no. I don't think we can do business along those lines. Yeah, well, think again and think fast. I mean, I can get along without you. And you keep that gorilla away from me while you're making up your mind. I'll kill him. Well, sir, I must say, you have a most violent temper. Well, what are you waiting for? You've got till 5.30. Then you, you're either in or you're out for keeps. Three characters and a black bird. Well, all I knew was my partner was dead and the cops were getting very uncooperative about the whole thing, including who killed Floyd Thursby. I thought I'd better get back to see that O'Shaughnessy dame before it was too late. And sure enough, it almost was. They came and took him away. Took who away? Who? The police. They, they wanted to talk to you too. They took Mr. Cairo with them. What was he doing here? He came to talk about the bird. Hey, what is this bird, this falcon that everybody's all steamed up about? Suppose I wouldn't tell you anything at all about it. What would you do? Something wild and unpredictable? Maybe. <sighs> well, it's a black figure, as you know smooth and shiny, of a bird or a hawk or a falcon, about 12 inches high. Well, what makes it so important? I don't know. They wouldn't tell me, but they promised me 500 pounds if I helped get it from a man who had it. Go ahead. Well, they promised me 500 pounds to help them and I did. Then we found that Joel Cairo was going to take the Falcon and desert Floyd and me, so we did that to Joel first. You are a liar. 
I am a liar. I've always been a liar. Well, don't brag about it. I mean, is there any truth at all in that yarn? Some, not very much. Well, we've got plenty of time. I'll put on some coffee and we'll try again. Oh, I'm so tired. So tired of lying and thinking of lies and not knowing what is a lie and what is the truth. <laughs> oh, darling, don't stare at me like that. Come closer, darling. Well, it is something to do while waiting. Why not? Kiss me, Sam Spade. Kiss me. Why not? <laughs> ah! It happens every time. I'll get it. Be careful, darling. Come on. He wants to see you now. <laughs> well, if it isn't Lady Cassie's killer. Hello, pale face. How many did you bump off today? Shut up. <laughs> Lady Gutman is waiting for you. No kidding. What kept you? Darling, what does she want? She wants me. Her Royal Highness has been thinking things over. Well, Mr. Spade, I must apologize for sending for you in this fashion. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's, let's get, let's talk about the bird. All right, let's. What do you think of the Order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem? Mm, crusaders or something, weren't they? Very good. In 1539, these crusading knights persuaded Emperor Charles V to give them the island of Malta. He made but one condition. They were to pay him each year the tribute of a falcon, in acknowledgement that Malta was still under Spain. Do you follow me? Yeah. Have you any conception of the extreme and measurable wealth of the order at that time? Well, I imagine they were pretty well fixed. They were rolling in wealth, sir. They hit upon the happy thought of sending the emperor the first year's tribute, not an insignificant live bird, but a glorious falcon encrusted from head to foot with the finest jewels in their coffers. Hmm. Vilma, be a dear and fill Mr. Spade's drink. It's getting low. Allow me to replenish your drink, sir. Well, what do you think of these knights? I don't know. Well, sir, the glorious falcon never reached Spain. Buccaneers raided the galleon. In 1713, the bird showed up in Sicily. In 1840, in Paris. And it had by that time acquired a coat of black enamel, looking nothing like a fairly interesting black statue. In 1931, a Greek dealer found it in an obscure Paris shop. He knew what it was. I heard about it in London and rushed over to buy it, but the Greek was murdered and the falcon gone. That was 10 years ago. For 10 years, I've searched for that bird. I traced it to the home of a Russian general, Kemidov, but he wouldn't sell, even though he knew nothing of its value. I was forced to send my agents after it. They got it, sir but I haven't got it. But I'm going to get it, sir. Um, how soon can you, uh, how soon are you willing to produce the falcon? Uh, a couple of days. That is satisfactory. Well, sir, here's a fair bargain and profits large enough for both of us. Hmm. 
What's your idea of a fair bargain? Shall I say uh, 100,000? Huh. Why not? What do you say to quarter of a million? Oh, uh, then you think the dingus is worth a million, huh? Why not? <clears throat> yeah, why not? Say, I, uh, I feel kind of funny, Lady Gutman. That, that drink. My dear man, how could you suggest anything so crude? Uh, uh, huh. <sighs> Vilma, take Mr. Spade back to his office. Yeah, the drink got him, huh? Put your guns away, Vilma. You must learn to be subtle in these things, like me. It's like a light, huh? Well, I owe him something, the louse. He thinks he's tough. Let's see if he can take this. That's enough, Vilma! You've kicked him enough. It did never do to kill him there. Besides, Vilma, you know how I hate the sight of blood. Oh. In a moment, you will hear the second part of Academy Award. You yourself uncover jewels more precious than the rarest gems every time you smile. Your teeth are priceless. Preserve their natural brilliance with creamy, smooth, squib dental cream. For the polishing agent in this quality dentifrice is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective known to dental science that you can actually see the refreshing difference when you brush your teeth with Squib Dental Cream. And you can taste and feel the refreshing difference too. That's because the delightful flavor of Squib Dental Cream is cool and inviting as a shady bed of mint. Because the refreshing action of Squib Dental Cream leaves your teeth and gums feeling gloriously clean. So, for a brighter smile and a happier mouth, try Squib Dental Cream, one of the great family of Squib products. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Use Squib Dental Cream. In a moment, you will hear part two of the Maltese Falcon, but first, we want to thank Warner Brothers for making this story available. And one more thing, on August 6th, Warner Brothers will celebrate 20th anniversary of Sound Pictures. Yes, it has been that long since the silent shadows of the screen found a voice. We congratulate Warner Brothers on this historic university anniversary. And now, the House of Squib presents part two of Academy Award, starring Humphrey Beauregard in the Maltese Falcon with Mary Astor and Sidney Greenstreet. I guess the name Sam Spade was a cinch for the back page obituaries, obituaries. But I came to back at my office with the place trashed. They tore the place apart looking for the bird. I guess her highness isn't as ladylike as she makes out. I had to find the bird before her. I went around to the hotel where Joel Cairo had a room and made a deal with the house dick to let me search it. All I could find was a newspaper in the wastebasket folded back to the steamship news. There was a list of arrivals and one was marked. It said 8, 7 a.m. the La Paloma from Hong Kong. That was good enough for me. I got a cab and rode to the docks. The La Paloma was on fire and burning beautifully. I went back to my office to hold my aching head. 
and think things over when the door opened. And a tall guy in a long black overcoat stood there with a package in his hands, making gurgling noises before he fell like a tree. He should have. He was dead. I took a good look at him. He was a mate off the La Paloma. I unwrapped his package and there it was, the black bird, the Maltese falcon. I grabbed the phone and listened. It was Bridget O'Shaughnessy and she, is, she said she was in trouble. I found her shivering in the dark corner of an office building and I took her and the falcon, the falcon home to my apartment. I put her on the couch and I put the falcon in the ice box where no one would think to look for anything, including ice. I came back in and I switched on the lights and found a surprise party waiting to greet me. Well, sir, we're all here. Now let's sit down and be comfortable and talk. Sure. Hey, get away with me, gorilla. You're not gonna frisk me. Stand still and shut up. Now put your paws off of me. I'm gonna make you use that gun. Ask your boss if she wants me shut up before we talk. Never mind, Vilma. You're certainly a most headstrong individual, Mr. Spade. Well, let's be seated. Well, you too, Cairo. You can put your gun down too. Of course, Mr. Spade. I was only using caution, as it were. Are you ready, Lady Gutman? Are you ready to make the first payment and take the falcon off my hands? Well, sir, as to that, here are the $10,000, sir. Oh, well, we were talking about more money than this. Yes, sir, we were. But this is genuine coin of the realm, sir. With a dollar of this, you can buy $10 of talk, and besides, there are more of us to be taken care of now. Well, that may be, but I've got the falcon. I should not think that it will be necessary to remind you, Mr. Spade, that though you may have the falcon, yet we certainly have you. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm trying not to let that worry me. All right, we'll come to the money later. There's another thing to be taken care of first. Now, we've got to have a fall guy. The police have to have a victim, somebody they can stick for the three murders. Two. Only two murders, Mr. Spade. Thursby undoubtedly killed your partner. All right, two. What difference does it make? The point is, we've got to give the police somebody- Come, come, Mr. Spade. You can't expect us to believe that at this later date, you're the least afraid of the police, or that you're not able to handle- Hey, I'm up to my neck, Lady Gutman. I've got to come through with somebody, a victim, when the time comes. If I don't, it'll be me. Then let's give him the gorilla. He actually did shoot Thursby and the other one, didn't he? Anyway, he's made order for the part. Let's turn him over to the cops. Get on your feet. I have taken all the writing from you I'm going to take. Get up and shoot it out. Now, now, Vilma, don't shoot. There, there you big gorilla, that'll take care of you. Now put him on the sofa. Sorry, Bridget, but you seem to have recovered. I'm all right. Good. Well, everyone, there's our fall guy. And now everyone, you agree, or I'll turn you, I'll turn the falcon and the whole lot of you in. Mr. Spade, I don't like this. What if we uh, took matters into our own hands and killed you? You won't, or you'll never find the Falcon. True, but there are other ways. We could make you talk. No, I'd, I'd take it and make you kill me and then you'd end up the same way. <laughs> I believe you would too. Well, I've always felt toward Vilma like a brother, but you can have him. Well, let's get the details fixed. 
Why did he shoot Thursby? Thursby was Miss O'Shaughnessy's ally. We thought in disposing of him, we could teach Miss O'Shaughnessy to patch up her differences with us regarding the Falcon. And the mate from the La Paloma. That was Miss O'Shaughnessy's fault. Oh. Cairo got in touch with me when he saw the notice of the ship's arrival. He remembered that the mate and Miss O'Shaughnessy had been friendly in Hong Kong. He called on this man, but he, with Miss O'Shaughnessy, and the bird slipped through our fingers. We followed them to her apartment, and Wilma shot the mate as he was coming down the fire escape. He shot him many times, but this man was top, and he did not drop the falcon. We um, persuaded Miss O'Shaughnessy to call your office, but unfortunately she did not call in time to prevent you from meeting the mate and getting the falcon. I see. And now, sir, would it be uh, presumptuous if we asked to see the Falcon? Okay. It's in the icebox. Icebox. <laughs> I say, you are a character. Yes, very, very clever of you. Very. I've got it! I've got it! Bring it in here. At once. Here, it's wrapped in this. Now, after ten years... Oh, it is it. But we'll make sure. Hand me your knife, sir. Here. Oh, all right, O'Shaughnessy, you've had your little joke. Now tell us all about it. <laughs> no, Sam, no, that's the one I got from the Russian, I swear. You bungled it, my lady. You and your stupid attempt to buy it. The Russian caught on how valuable it was. No wonder we had so little trouble stealing it, you stupid little girl. Yes, this is the Russian's hand. There's no doubt of it. Well, sir, what do you suggest? Shall we stand here and shed tears and call each other names? Or shall we go to Istanbul and interview our Russian friend? I'll go with you. Look, Vilma's gone. Vilma's gone? So he has. That makes it imperative that we go too. Oh, by the way, sir, I'll trouble you for my envelope containing the $10,000. Uh, I kept my end of the bargain, but I'll settle for a thousand in expenses. Thank you. I'll allow you the thousand. That'll take care of my time. Now, sir, we'll say goodbye to you. Unless you care to undertake the Istanbul expedition with us. You don't. That's too bad. Well, sir, the shortest farewells are best. Adieu to you. And to you, Miss O'Shaughnessy. I leave Verara Avis there on the table as a little memento. The Maltese Falcon. <laughs> All right, O'Shaughnessy, talk. Where shall I begin? Well, you came to me and asked me to have Thursby followed. I put my partner on it. He followed Thursby and he was killed. You must have told Thursby he was being followed. I told him yes. But believe me, Sam, I wouldn't have told him if I thought that Floyd Thursby would kill your partner. Well, Miles had many brains, but he'd had too many years experience as a as a detective to be caught like that by a man who was shadowing up, he, who he was shadowing up a blind alley with his gun tucked away in his hip and his overcoat buttoned. But he'd have gone up there with you, Angel. Ah, he was just dumb enough for that. And then you could have stood as close to him in the dark as you liked and put a bullet. 
No, don't, don't talk to me like that, Sam. You know that I didn't know. Stop it! Why did you shoot him? I, I didn't mean to at first. Oh, I can't, I can't look at you and talk to you about this, Sam. You thought Thursby would tackle him. If he got Thursby, then you were rid of him. If Thursby won, you had something on him, enough to be rid of him for good, wasn't that it? Something like that. But when Thursby backed down, you took the gun and did the job yourself. Oh, Sam, sweetheart. At least from the very beginning, the first time that I saw you, I, I, I knew. You angel. I... Well, if you get a good break, you'll be out of San Quentin in 20 years and you can come back to me then. Uh, I hope they don't hang you, precious, by that sweet neck. You know deep down in your heart, despite everything I've done, that I love you. I don't care who loves who. I'm not going to play the sap for you. I won't walk in Thursby's and I don't know how many others' footsteps. You killed my partner and you're going away for it. Why must you do this to me, Sam? Surely your partner wasn't worth as much to you as- well, Listen, listen to me. This won't do any good. You'll never understand me, but I'll try once and then I'll give up. Listen, when a man's partner is killed, he's supposed to do something about it. And it, and it happens we're in the detective business. Well, when one of your organization gets killed, it's bad business to let the killer get away with it. Bad all around, bad for detectives everywhere. But you can't send me. Sam, you can't. You love me. You love me, Sam. Maybe I do. What of it? Maybe next month I won't. I've been through it before. I'll have some rotten nights after you. I've sent you over, but they'll pass. I want you. But I won't take you at the price because, because all of me wants to, regardless of the consequences. And because you counted on me, on that with me. The same as you counted on, all, on that with all the others. Oh, Sam. Darling. Kiss me. Kiss me. Sure. Sure, baby. <laughs> doing what are you doing who are you calling the cops baby the cops to come and take you away oh. just as thrilling as tracking down some fabulous treasure is the search for the unknown which goes on unceasingly in the Squibb Research Laboratories. For that is the search that leads to the discovery of new life-saving drugs and new life-saving uses for existing drugs. And streptomycin is one of those newest products of this searching. In the new field of medicine opened up by penicillin, streptomycin still in the testing stages shows great promise against additional enemies of mankind. This is why squib scientists are working night and day to unlock the secrets of streptomycin, to improve the strain, to find and test all the ways in which it may be used in the conquest of disease. It is this same questioning spirit, this refusal to stop anywhere short of perfection that inspires all endeavors of the house of squib. It is one, the one reason why, wherever you come across it in the service of human health, Squib is the name you can trust. Next Wednesday, another great picture. The House of Squib will present Academy Award starring Henry Fonda and Mr. Lincoln. Today's performance of the Maltese Falcon was written for the radio by Frank Wilson, and the producer-director for this production is me, Marshall Glass. The talent of tonight's performances, the performance are Jackie Arend as Sam Spade, Rachel Grimes as Bridget O'Shaughnessy, Aaron Jones as Joel Cairo, James Power as Vilmer Cook, and Michelle Chin as Lady Gutman. 
Our Foley artist is Alex Hollis. And our music, musical director, Andy Chung. And again, I am Marshall Glass bidding you good night until next time when you are invited to listen again to our live radio plays recorded from the Sandra Seacat Virtual Theater, presented by Artist Corner of Arizona Actors Academy. This is AZRP 29.9 and wishing you all to stay safe, stay connected, and continue to feed the artist within. Good night. Mm -hmm.